My name is Brandy Cox, and I am a champion for change. My name is Janice Irwin. I'm the MLA for Edmonton Highlands Norwood, and I'm a champion for change. My name is Evan Romano. I'm Assistant Deputy Minister for Health Service Delivery with the Government of Alberta Ministry of Health, and I am a champion for change. My name is Suzanne Anselmo. I've been a government official for over 30 years in social services, and I am a champion for change. CNIB Foundation presents Champions for Change, Top 5 Policymaker Questions. Question number one, what advice would you give to people trying to advocate for changes within policies, laws, and systems? Suzanne Anselmo, I would suggest that they build a relationship with policymakers, with elected officials, with uh, government officials, uh, because when you build a relationship where you help educate and reach a shared understanding of the environment within which you are advocating. It helps foster good discussion. It helps uh, address some of the immediate or long-term needs that the advocate is seeking. Um, I find that if they couple that with uh, data, research, and lived experience, it brings a fruitful conversation that often uh, generates results that both parties feel are advancing that particular issue. Question number two. As a policymaker, what are the most effective ways that people have advocated to you in your professional experience? Evan Romano. So as a policymaker, I think some of the most uh, effective ways that people have ad advocated to me uh, in my experience is probably uh, first starting with an awareness that people who, like myself, who work within the public service and policy realms are here because we're actually very passionate ourselves about supporting change in society and in our communities. And I, I think it's so important to come at it from that approach looking to be collaborative and, and looking to, to find partnerships, build trusted relationships. Suzanne Anselmo, some of the most effective ways in which people have advocated uh, their particular uh, area of concern uh, with me personally uh, is that they've established a respectful relationship. They've uh, educated me on the complexities of the issue that uh, they are presenting with data, research, and lived experience. Uh, they have an understanding of government systems, uh, what government is empowered to do and what uh, community is empowered to do. Uh, when, they, when they bring together kind of a uh, who is responsible for what, who is accountable for what, who needs to be consulted and who needs to be informed, this really helps lay a, the groundwork for us to be able to work together collaboratively towards a solution. Question number three. As a policymaker, can you give us a sense of how many issues you deal with on a daily or weekly basis? What advice would you give to people who have advocated for themselves or others but haven't made progress on the issue because it's been lost in the system. Evan Romano, our ministry as a whole, probably in the last year uh, and any given year, receives between five or 10,000 pieces of correspondence or formal reach out to different organizations or members of the community. My team alone in the last year received about 1,500 pieces of correspondence that we actually actively have to follow up on. And that's completely separate from budget processes, legislation, or regulatory changes, or other major pieces of policy where there are separate engagement or consultation processes. Brandy Cox, I deal with hundreds of issues a week. Uh, we we are, are always kind of in receipt of lots of correspondence from Albertans and those that we're serving. Um, and I think, you know, to a new advocate who is maybe wondering, uh, you know, why why their issue isn't coming to the surface as quickly as they might like, I'd say it's really important to be persistent. 
uh, be patient, um, but not too patient, uh, which is, you know, where my advice of being persistent comes from, because uh, certainly, you know, everyone's guilty of um, things being sometimes lost in the system or um, things that don't seem to be as urgent, not coming to the top of the uh, the file. So um, I think you just really want to make sure that you're following up and that you're, you know, um, really taking whatever opportunities you can uh, to communicate your interests. And so that that might not just be a letter, it might be phone calls, um, requests for meetings, those types of things. So, you know, there's multiple avenues, I think, to uh, establishing some of those relationships and um, being able to uh, broker the relationship in order to advocate. Question number four, as a decision maker, are you more persuaded by personal experiences or data and research? Janice Irwin, I'm certainly someone who really believes in the power of story and the power of, um, you know, personal experience and sharing one's experience, especially when, you know, I deal with a lot of um, vulnerable people in my daily work. And so when I encounter someone who's willing to um, to open up and to be vulnerable and to share their story, that's a pretty powerful thing. Brandy Cox. So I always see that personal story as a bit of the hook. The, the reason why I would want to learn more about the issue that's at hand, that's being advocated. And so um, I think that's always a great sort of entry point. Uh, but certainly there needs to be a bit more um, in terms of deeper research that would have um, some of that evidence-based uh, approach to support decision making. Um, that's really, I think, important to understanding, uh, you know, who's being impacted uh, by by the policy or the issue. Um, how is the proposed solution going to remedy that? Um, and are, you know, there any unintended consequences that we need to consider? Suzanne Anselmo, I will share personally that I, my older brother has Down syndrome and autism. He has uh, been assessed as full supports on the support intensity scale. He is nonverbal. So when I have advocated on his behalf for supports and services for persons with disabilities, uh, sometimes when I present the data, present the research, but uh, when I speak to his lived experience that it took 19 years for him to toilet train, people understand much better about some of the challenges that he faces to be participating in society as fully and completely as he should be able to. Question number five. What would you say to someone who says that one voice can't make a change? Janice Irwin, you know, this whole idea of, of one voice not making a difference um, has been proven, uh, proven wrong multiple times in, in history. But, you know, I would always say to kids, like, you know, uh, change, change starts with, with one person. And, and I still talk to students all the time because I miss, I miss teaching. Um, and I, I say to them, like, don't, don't ever let, you know, an elected official like me or, or anyone really tell you that your voice doesn't matter. Brandy Cox. So from my own experience, it was one person that started me off on kind of my desire to champion diversity and inclusion within the organization. One person that reached out to me and told me how um, a process that we were putting in place across our organization was impacting him and others that um, were, were in his community. And I heard that story and I thought we need to do something about this. And I was able to leverage my networks and um, be able to, to really uh, make a lasting change. Evan Romano. But at the end of the day, one person does, and uh, almost in every case, it is the reason that change happens. Uh, and don't be persuaded uh, against taking action because it looks too big. Uh, I think starting with one person and branching out and building out your enthusiasm to align with that of others uh, is absolutely the way that, that needs to go. Uh, it comes down to one person at the end of the day. And uh, individual's passion is very much what takes uh, important priorities across the finish line. Suzanne Anselmo, I think about people like Terry Fox. There are many people that started off with one voice, and then people 
join that chorus, that one person chorus. And the voices get stronger and positive change happens. CNIB Foundation presents Champions for Change, Top 5 Policymaker Questions. Funding for Champions for Change provided by Novartis.